Okay, so this is a bit of a detour from what I've been working on over the past few weeks with, you know, the rust bucket PC stuff and all, but this here is an ETOP ATX-E7 motherboard, which is a ridiculously overpowered board for a socket 478. It supports 4 gigabytes of RAM, AGP Pro, CPUs with hyper-threading, and from snooping around in the BIOS options a little bit, it even supports NX bit. So if I ever find a unicorn socket 478 CPU with both 64 bit support and NX bit support, I could potentially even run Windows 11 on this, but at best, maybe Windows 10, 32 bit at least. Anyway, as you can see here, I have a Sound Blaster R32 in one of the ISA slots and these cards normally require DMA channels in order to work. One channel for 8-bit audio and two channels for 16-bit audio. And this era of boards especially is very finicky as far as DMA channels go. Because a lot of them obviously don't even have ISA slots in the first place. But the ones that do often don't connect the ISA slots to any of the DMA channel lines coming from the Southbridge chip here. But this one does. And as proof of that, I am about to run the Creative Sound Blaster Diagnose program. We'll just continue on, continue on. We'll just auto scan. Auto scan. Continue. Our Q7 works. And here is where we're picking DMA channels. So, if I remember correctly, DMA channel 1 was auto configured. Yep. And next up, DMA channel 5 also is configured. And the problem with this board is that its BIOS doesn't allow me to manually configure DMA channels for ISA slots. It is all auto detected. So, if your sound card needs like hyper specific DMA channels, then this board probably wouldn't be a good pick if you were to hypothetically get it. But for plug and play cards like the Sound Blaster R32, it should work just fine. Anyway, so the speaker here is absolutely wimpy, so I'm just gonna press enter and play the sound. And now, yeah, as you can hear right there. 16-bit testing. Both 8-bit and 16-bit audio works, which means that the DMA channels are also fully working. So let's go ahead and go on to synthesized music and AWE synthesized music. And yeah, audio control also works, so that's also nice. And so, yeah, this board, since it supports ISA DMA, I guess now it means that I have two systems that have that level of support, though this one supports manually steering DMA channels, but this one is a lot less nerfed than the board in that one. That one has an 845GV motherboard in it, while this one has an 865 chipset. And yeah, the 845GV chipset only has integrated video. I cannot use any AGP cards on it for external dedicated video cards because the AGP slot on 845GV boards is a so-called ADD slot, which is for like pretty much slapping a DVI port onto the integrated GPU. Anyway, yeah, this one, as you can see right here, oh, 
I gotta be careful not to yank any wires out. This has an AGP Pro slot, which is a little bit longer than regular AGP, and as you can see here, there's also a little blanking thing there to prevent AGP cards from, well, regular non-pro AGP cards from being inserted in the wrong spot. And once again, it's got four RAM slots, and if I remember correctly, it even supports dual channel memory, so... Yeah, four gigs of RAM maximum in dual channel, plus AGB Pro, plus a ridiculous amount of CPU support, plus ISA DMA. Aside from the lack of manual DMA steering, yeah, manual DMA channel steering control in BIOS, this is like the perfect board for absolutely overpowered DOS gaming, as well as, you know, Checking out old ISA cards. I, funnily enough, it was actually this board that I was using to test the floppy controller after I replaced the actual controller chip here because I put away my XT board so that then I actually have space to test this. So, yeah, testing the floppy controller was my first hint that this board really does support. DMA channels over ISA, and now with the Sound Blaster R32, that confirms it even more. And I don't have a Gravis Ultrasound, unfortunately, so I cannot test one of the most finicky sound cards out there as far as DMA goes, but yeah, I'm just happy that it's as functional as it is right now. Obviously, it does need like, it's in a dire need of recapping, as you can see by the capacitor there. They're all starting to bulge, but just for, like, short testing periods like this, it is very nice so far.